morning, everybody, and welcome to the California Small Farm Conference. We're on day three, and uh, we are so excited to have you here for streamlining your social media presence. Um, we're going to be kicking off uh, today looking at the great wide world of social media and how you can apply that for your farm or ranch. Um, and uh, we are so lucky to have uh, an expert in this, um, someone who has uh, managed to uh, really leverage social media uh, to, to promote uh, their operation and has a wealth of knowledge. So we're really excited. Elizabeth, you want to introduce today's presenter? So why don't you take it away, Elizabeth? Yeah, thank you. And I do have a couple slides just to get people settled in. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Um, we're actually including this as a thir the third part to one of our value added product uh, webinar series. It's brought to you by the Tech Hub. Um, so just wanted to make sure um, folks know that there's a wealth of resources in addition to um, the amazing information Mary's going to provide today that's brought to you by the Small Farm Tech Hub at CAF. Um, so this is just a snapshot of the two other farmers that we featured as part of this webinar series. Um, and if you are a CSA farmer, I can't recommend enough to watch the recording um, that Shared Legacy Farms provided on February 14th. It's on our YouTube channel. She did a really awesome job um, providing some marketing tips and tricks for CSA farmers. So please check that out. Um, and this is, like I mentioned, brought to you by the Small Farm Technology Hub at CAF. We provide a whole bunch of resources for farmers. So if you haven't uh, checked out our website with um, a list of those resources, please do so. Um, and we also provide one-on-one uh, -on -one technical support to small farm businesses operating out of California as part of our program. Um, so I have the link there. If you wanna request for, um, for some support, please feel free to do that. Um, I know we only have 45 minutes today, so I do really want to make sure we give as much time as possible to Mary. Um, we're thrilled to have Mary on this morning. Um, she's going to present to us on how to grow an audience, use specific tools and strategies to attract your ideal customer and monetize your efforts. Um, she'll also discuss how to convert your audience to grow an email list and the importance and effectiveness of marketing. Um, so she'll take it away here for the next um, 30, 35, maybe 40 minutes, and then we'll have some time for Q&A with the audience. Um, so if you have any questions, you're welcome to post them in the chat or the Q&A box now, and we'll get to those at the end um, or throughout her presentation. Please feel free to, to put those in. Um, you've probably seen these bullets here that are on the screen. Really excited to hear from Mary, um, owner of Five Mary's Farm. Um, she's been featured in Oprah Magazine, and she has 252,000 followers on Instagram. So Mary, I'm going to let you Take it away here from now on out. Thanks. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me, Elizabeth. I'm really excited to be here to talk to you guys. Um, I'm a sixth generation Californian and have had agriculture in my family um, for six generations. So it's really fun to be part of this group today and speaking to so many California farmers. Um, my husband and I are first generation to really get back into agriculture um, as ranchers. My husband's father was a farmer, but row crops and raising cattle are very different. So we, um, my husband went to law school thinking that uh, it was going to be hard to, there was a, wasn't really a place for him and his family operation. His dad wisely told him, go find a job that um, you know you can make money and maybe you can get your way back to agriculture. So he went to law school and we were living in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, it's where I grew up, now better known as Silicon Valley, um, the land of opportunity. I was an entrepreneur there, um, kind of roped my husband into some entrepreneurial ventures with me. We actually opened restaurants totally by accident, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, but that's how we got back into agriculture um, by chance, because we were looking to source really great quality beef for our restaurants. And we had trouble finding a small farm that could do the scale year round, um, that could do the quality. We wanted grass fed and barley finish. Um, we wanted to be able to dry age all of our beef, even our ground beef. And in looking for this, um, we kind of naively thought, well, we know exactly what we want. We're passionate about this. Um, let's try to do it ourselves. And I think, you know, our, our ulterior motive was really, we, we wanted to be out working with our hands, um, have a piece of property, not be stuck in the city. And so we jumped in with both feet, bought some property in Siskiyou County. So we're at the top of the state in California. Um, and 
still kind of thought we could do this halfway and still have our old life in the Bay Area. So we were running our restaurants and our retail shops um, during the week. My husband was still practicing a little bit of law. And then we would come to the ranch on the weekends and try to start setting up operations. We had four little girls um, all still in car seats making that drive. And it was only a few weekends when we looked at each other and said, what were we thinking? We can't do both of these things. We have to pick one to do it well and do it right. And it was the easiest decision we'd ever made. We said, we were passionate about this. We want to be ranchers. We want to live in a small town. We want our kids to work hard with us. Um, We don't want to raise kids in the city. It was harder to unwind. We had to sell all our businesses and really start from scratch. We had bought some uh, a piece of property that was somewhat dilapidated. It didn't have good fencing. It didn't have hay barns. It didn't have silos. Um, we didn't own a tractor. So we knew that the only way to make this work um, as a business, you know, we had closed, sold all of our previous businesses. We had to make a living as first generation farmers with lots of inputs um, from the start. So direct to consumer, Um, 10 years ago, nine years ago, seemed like the best option. We didn't want to be off the farm having to do farmer's markets. Um, We didn't want to have to employ a lot of staff on the ranch. We wanted to be the ones raising these animals. So um, shipping for us seemed the best route. Nine years ago, there weren't really anybody shipping meats on a regular basis, any small farms that I could talk to and say, hey, what do you do about dry ice? Where do you get your liners? Um, so we made a lot of mistakes, spent a lot of money trying to figure out the best way to actually ship our meats direct to consumer. Um, after about a year of trial and error, we found the secret sauce, how to do it economically, efficiently, um, not to have spoilage. We have less than a quarter percent of our boxes, not make it to our customers a quarter of a percent, (laughs) sorry, very, very big differentiation. Um, very few of our boxes don't make it perfectly to our customers and, um, we don't have to leave the ranch. So we have uh, over 30,000 customers. Um, we are harvesting beef, pork, and lamb. We do 12 steers every single week and about the equivalent of um, beef and, and or of pork and lamb. And every pack, every pound that we raise goes directly to our customers. So to do this, we obviously had to build a customer base from the ground up. Um, and back then, nine years ago, social media was in a very different place, but we have grown our following by sharing um, our story every single day. And when we started, I think what really worked for us and um, got people so interested in what we were doing was being very open and transparent and authentic about, wow, this is this new life we've chosen. Um it was all new to me. At least my husband had grown up with a little more agriculture in his day to day. So, um, he was a little more seasoned in it, but I, everything was new to me. My eyes were wide open, like, wow, I didn't know, you know, you have to trick test your bulls or I didn't know you have to do this. And so being able to share that with our audience and making them feel comfortable, like, wow, I didn't know that either, um, was really helpful in growing our following. So today social media is a lot more saturated. Um, but it is a fantastic tool for you to share your story. Everybody has a story and you might think, gosh, you know, my story is not as interesting. Um, how can I, you know, compete with these people who have, um, more interesting stories than I do. You have a story to tell. You have an angle. You have some aspects of your life that are interesting and that other people want to be a part of. And when you can open up that window into your life and share that story, people find that connection with you and want to be a part of your brand and want to buy what you're selling. And that is really the secret to social media. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to share every nuance of your life. You can define where those barriers are if you don't want to share your children, if you don't want to share certain aspects. But to have people really engage with you, you need to share, you need to, they need to be a little voyeuristic and see a little bit into, gosh, how is this life different than mine? How is this similar to mine? Um, The behind the scenes, I always coach my um, entrepreneurs that people love the behind the scenes because it makes them feel a part of it. So if you are launching a new beef business or you're launching a new flour business, um, we want to do the opposite of what big businesses do, which is come out with a fully polished campaign. The product is ready. Everybody can buy it. The links are perfect. Everything works. 
small businesses have a lot more leeway and a lot more, a lot, a different angle that's going to work for us. And that is sharing the struggle and sharing the journey. And that's what people connect with. So way before you even have a product ready, when you're trying to figure out what's our name going to be, are we going to take this generational name that's been passed down that we have, you know, multiple families in, are we going to create our own path? What logo are we going to choose? How are we going to design our logo? What are our brand colors going to be? If you can share all those aspects, do a little poll on social media, which do you love A or B? What do you think our logo should be? Even if you're not that interested in other people's opinions, because oh, let's face it, sometimes it's too much information, just making people feel a part of it so that when you launch and you say, hey, look, here's our logo. You guys helped design this. Those people who saw that part of your journey are that much more connected to, to your whole process and your brand. And then maybe you, you get your logo design and you sell some hats. Who wants to buy a baseball cap with our logo on it? I'm still figuring out our shop, but here's our basic website. I'm still working on it. Um, but you can buy one of our hats now and, and rep our brand. People are buying your hats. They're excited to rep your brand. And then you finally have product, even if it's six months or a year from now. You can open your doors and say, hey, guys, thanks for being along for this journey with us. Here's our product or here's our new launch or here's something exciting happening with our business. You can be a part of it. And those people that you've worked so hard to engage and cultivate this audience that you've um, grown they are hitting buy, send that to me. Yes, I want it. And you will have a much more successful launch or whatever it is. Um, now growing these days is harder. Social media is saturated. There's a lot of noise on social media. Um, and you don't, nobody's going to grow overnight. We didn't grow overnight. It was very slow progress. Um, being very thoughtful about what we're sharing, how we're sharing, how we're reaching new people. Uh, Social media is free. It is a tool that only requires your time. And it's worth understanding and learning the ins and outs, especially of Instagram. We've grown mostly on Instagram. Facebook is also a fantastic tool, especially if you do local sales. Um, Instagram kind of reaches the whole world, but you can definitely target, you know, US customers, regional customers. Facebook works really well for even smaller regions. Um, works great for local businesses if you're doing drop-off deliveries, um, but it works great for everybody if you use it right. So it's worth investing time to understand um, what works for these tools, how you can apply these to your business, what your story is going to be, and how you're going to tell that story. My husband always says agriculture has a great story to tell. We all have a great story to tell. We're just not all used to telling that story. You know, we're used to just putting our heads down and working, um, especially people in agriculture. But if you can find the time to open a window into your life and share the good and the bad, um, I always advise not the ugly. <laughs> you don't want to, we're still trying to share our product here. So while we might share you know, the cows on beautiful green pasture. And then the hard day when we have to pull a calf and the calf doesn't make it. And, you know, the feelings and emotions behind that, that's the good and the bad. And people want to see that. Don't share the ugly, which is the cow abscess or a part of your operation um, that might turn people off from actually buying your product. So there's a lot of um, ways you can think about how you're going to share and what you're going to share. And the more honest and open you are, the more naturally you're going to grow. People are going to connect with you just like the old fashioned word of mouth and say, you know what? I really love um, this, this story, this person I'm following their brand. I'd love for you to be a part of it. Um, I bet you're going to love them too. Go follow them on Instagram. That is the number one way to grow. And what a lot of people do is share each other. Um, on Instagram by saying, oh my gosh, I just got this box from a small farm. When we were growing, I would send a lot of um, complimentary boxes. So I would send boxes to um, people that I know valued high quality beef, um, paleo people, gym kind of workout people, homeschooling moms that really cared about what they were feeding their kids, all natural um, programs. When you can, sh when you can target who your ideal customer is, and send a sample to them with no expectation that you're going to share. If you say, hey, I'll, I'll send you this if you promise to share it, that's the, the best way to have it not work authentically. You just say, hey, I just want to share this with you as a gift. Um, people sharing that can really open up a world to 
all of their network of followers. Um, and that just happens naturally. You know, you want to have really good branding. If you are shipping or you are doing delivery, whatever method you're getting um, your product to your customers, if it's in a simple brown bag, that's fine. That might be what works for you. But if it's in a box that's beautifully presented, that has a cute postcard on the top with your family on it and a photo and a little bio about what you do or a brochure. Um, we do a lot of little recipe booklets. We did a Five Marys magazine that goes in there and it's like, you know, a giant brochure that has so much information on who we are and what we do. When people open that and they have that wow factor, they're so much more likely to share. And that only works in your favor um, as you grow and as people want to tell your story for you. Um, so social media, <clears throat> as I said, is a fantastic tool. I do have a lot of workshops that will teach you the ins and outs, what I've learned on what works for sharing social media and what will work for you. <clears throat> but I think it's also really important to remember that, oh, sorry, I'm just getting over losing my voice. It's really important to remember <clears throat> that we don't own our social media platforms. So social media can change, <clears throat> excuse me, need a little more water. So um, Instagram owns, Meta owns Instagram, Meta owns Facebook they get to decide how these algorithms work and what people see. And sometimes that can be frustrating. And it can be especially frustrating in agriculture because they aren't always pro ag. You can sell um, purses and sweaters on Instagram, but they won't let you link agricultural products in your shop. No dairy, no eggs, no cheese, no meats because of an animal cruelty clause they have somewhere in there. Does that seem fair? No, <laughs> but do we own the platform? Also, no. So we have to use Instagram for the way it works and um, work with their parameters. A lot of people have gotten into trouble where their account gets hacked. This following that they've worked so hard and so long to um, amass all of a sudden can be gone and they have no access to that anymore. That can happen. So it's also very important and I think far more valuable to work on your email marketing strategy Having an email list where you own the email address of that customer is a far more valuable than social media. So I use my social media to talk to a large crowd. We call it the cocktail party. Everybody's milling around. You have a, a lot of pe different people you could talk to with a lot of different interests. You want to whittle that down to a dinner party. Those are the people that are on your team, ready to buy what you're selling and really care about you and your brand. So I say on social media often, hey, do you want this free copy of my a digital version of my Five Marys magazine. Um, here's my top 10 easy family dinner recipes. Give them something we call an opt-in that will they'll will they will happily trade their email address for. And then once you have these email addresses, it's really important to be sending email campaigns regularly and to provide value in them. Just like on social media, I think there's three main tenets for what you're sharing um, on social media and through your email content that you're sharing because you can get someone's email, but it's easy for them to hit unsubscribe, getting them to open that email and consistently open that email and not unsubscribe, um, is also a game that you need to understand and to play. So, um, when I'm sharing these things and I can get somebody's email, um, what I share on social media and what I share in my newsletter have different strategies, but the three tenants, like I said, are pretty much the same. You want to educate. Today, more than ever, people love to learn. They, everybody wants to be lifelong learners. They want to continue learning. So when I share something about, hey, did you know this is why eggs from chicken, different breeds are different colors? You'd be shocked how many people don't know that. They don't understand why eggs are different colors um, or what goes into raising beef and finishing beef. People are so thankful. Gosh, I never knew that. I'll have people say, I didn't know you had to feed cows every day in the winter. Like I'm going to appreciate every bite of a steak. I take so much more knowing how much work goes into it. So when you can educate people, they are getting value out of following you and they'll continue to follow you. And they, to some extent, feel like they owe you a little something for all this education you're doing. Not everybody, but some people will say, gosh, she has something to sell. I'm going to buy it because I have got, I've learned so much from this account. 
Um, and you can do the same thing in your email newsletters, provide a little how to a blog post. You don't want to have all the information in your email newsletter, but you want to have little snippets of it that say, Hey, head on over to my website, head on over to my blog. Um, you'll find the rest of it that drives traffic to your site. Um, and it's good for so many reasons. So, uh, education is number one. Entertainment is number two. People loved to be entertained, right? We all love entertainment. It's how reality TV got to be popular. It's why social media is popular. And now why these reels and video format um, is the, the most popular thing on Instagram. You want to entertain people. And you can do that with an educational spin. Or um, you can do it just kind of telling a story, you know, showing your day. <clears throat> I always tell my entrepreneurs, like, they don't know where to start. Do a day in the life. Start it, you know. 4:45 a.m. your alarm goes off, you're making your coffee. What do you do next? Do you sit by the fire and, you know, send some emails, pay some bills, do your taxes, come outside at daylight? Who do you feed first? Um, you pick up your kids at school. Your whole day is really interesting to people. Um, like I said, how is it different? How is it the same as theirs? So by sharing those little snippets, you're entertaining people. It doesn't have to exactly be education, but you are opening a window to your world and telling that story that's entertainment. And you can do that as well in your email newsletters. Tell a little story from the farm. What happened this week? Um, people don't want to just say, hey, 50% off this week only. They want some entertainment. They want a story. Hey, sweetie, you want to take the dog? Okay. Um, and then the last one is to inspire. So people want to follow you because they say, hey, Maybe I can do that too. I would love to have a homestead. I would love to have a milk cow. I would love to grow flowers. They're inspired because you are saying, I did this. This is my story. This is how I made it happen. This is how I overcome obstacles. And people think, gosh, maybe I can do that too. And you can share that as well in your newsletter. Um, providing value in your e email newsletter also comes in the form of recipes, DIYs, things that you can share that people People say, oh, I'm excited to get this email every week because I know I'm going to open it up and find something of value. So we use social media to reach a very wide audience that's always growing. Um, and those people buy different things from us. I'm also a big proponent of diversifying your income, um, having different outlets for what you can sell, products of different price points so that all of these people that you're working hard to grow your audience with have um, different things that they can buy. We have a lot of vegans and vegetarians who follow us who aren't going to buy our meat, but they're buying our honey. They're buying our spice rub. Um, they're buying our hats. They're buying my digital products. Um, we do cookbooks. We've done a children's book. We've done prints like, a, you know, the little butchery cuts of a cow print. There's so many different ways once you work to grow this audience that you can convert them to customers. And it's nice to have more than just one product so that you're giving them a variety of things to say, hey, do you want to buy this from me now? Um, and I also uh, always am a big believer in the 80-20 rule. If you can do those three things, educate, inspire, and entertain 80% of the time, then you save 20% for those, hey, look at my new product. We're doing a sale this week. Um, if you can keep it giving them 80% of value and then only taking 20% of, okay, I've shared, I've shared, I've shared. Now it's my turn. How about you guys want to buy this? Um, that works really well without pe people feeling too overwhelmed or like they're just being um, sold to all the time. Um, <clears throat> there's there's really never been a better time though to use social media to grow your following. Um, the big thing right now is reels. Video content was very 2022. The trend now is kind of going back to beautiful photos, which is nice. We all kind of miss beautiful photos. And I think everybody is oversaturated with the video reel scrolling. Um, I believe that the reels have a place. They definitely can reach a large audience with how many people are viewing them, but they're not your ideal customer. And those people aren't coming back to your account and saying, oh, I'm going to follow this because I want to learn more. They're just using that for pure entertainment. Getting somebody to see your content is one thing. When you look at your Instagram analytics, you'll see um, how many people you reach, how many followers you have, and what your engagement is. Those are all very important. Don't worry about your follower count. You can have a successful business with 100 followers. You can have a very successful business with 500 followers. Think of it in terms of a giant lecture hall or a concert hall. <laughs> if you have 100 people that showed up in a room to listen to what you have to say, 
you can do a lot with that. There's a lot of potential sales. That's a lot of customers. Nurture those hundred people and you will grow naturally. If you reach 500 people and you think, gosh, but these people have tens of thousands of Instagram followers. Like how am I going to have a successful business with 500 followers, even though I'm so proud that I got to 500 followers. That is huge. That's a huge audience that will naturally grow and work on providing great content for those 500 followers instead of worrying about that number. That number is a vanity metric. It doesn't mean anything and it does not determine the success of your business. Your engagement and how much people are um, you know, liking and commenting and engaging and sharing your photos and your posts, that's a much more valuable number. That shows how great of a job you're doing of sharing content. And it um, really is a marker for how well you're going to grow to reach those ideal customers. So I would rather get one new customer, one new follower on my Instagram today from somebody who said, this is the best meet. You're going to love it. You're going to love their story. Follow them. That is a huge win. Then getting 10,000 people to view a new reel that are like, oh, that's funny. Interesting. Okay, whatever. Because you can even get them to your bio, but getting them to click follow is a lot harder. Sometimes they might see your content multiple times and know you're out there, um, but not follow you. People are very, um, you know, careful about their curated feed. Like who are they, who are they following that is entering into their life um, every day? And when you get them to your profile, so they see one of your posts, they some, they see somebody shared some of your content, they get to that point on your profile and you want them to hit follow, right? The number one way, the number one thing you need to remember about your profile is it is your billboard. Those top nine or 12 last posts on your main feed are the most important part. Come here, Jelly. Um, the most important part of what people are going to see. And that's always changing. Social media is hard because your content um, is really only 24, 48 hours. Sometimes something will kind of come back into the algorithm, especially reels. But the last nine to 12 photos um, or posts are what people see when they come to your feed. You need to make sure that you, your face is in those nine to 12 photos. A lot of people aren't comfortable getting in front of the camera. I'm pretty much, I'm an introvert. I don't love being out there, but I know Instagram works for my business. So I've gotten very comfortable. I talk to Instagram like it's my best friend who's a supporter of my business, loves what we're doing, buys our product. Don't think of the people that say, oh, you, you, it's always in your head like, oh, my sister-in-law, she's going to think I'm crazy sharing this. I'm an oversharer, that person I went to high school with. Don't think of anybody who's going to be um, negative about what you share. Think about that one person who loves you and loves what you're doing and supports you. And you talk to them. So you don't get on there and say, hey, guys, I know all of you, blah, blah, blah. You say, oh, my gosh, you are not going to believe what happened. You want that person to feel like they are the only one you're talking to. Um, and you can I connect to 250,000 people that way saying you are the one I'm talking to. I want to tell you my story. And people feel like they're your friend and they feel that connection and they ultimately want to become a customer. Um, but the, to me, the reels, it is a great way to, to grow, um, to reach more accounts, but the real growth happens when you're creating real content that speaks to those followers who care about what you're doing, care about what you're selling, um, want to hit follow and want to be a part of your brand and ultimately convert to a customer. Um, and like I said, 10,000 people can see a real and none will convert to be a customer, but real honest sharing and other people sharing that that's what converts. And you only need a few of those compared to the tens of thousands of just viewers that you're making content for. Um, but you really have to show up. You have to be in your feed. You should be on your profile picture. Uh, people don't connect to logos. They don't connect to, you know, look at these pictures of our products they connect to you. Who's behind this account? And think of it yourself. When you go to a new account and you're like, oh, what is this? If it's just pictures of chickens and eggs, you're like, okay, well, those are very pretty eggs, but I've seen chickens and eggs a lot. So I don't know why I would follow this account. If you're like, oh, this, okay, here's this girl. She's, she's just starting to learn to raise chickens. She's sharing a lot of tips as she goes. I'm, I'm going to follow this because I might learn something or it's entertaining or all the, the reasons we've talked about. So, um, you have to show up in your feed. You have to be a part of it um, if you want to be successful. And I know that's not always the answer any everybody wants to hear, but um, I believe it's very true. Um, so I think we're going to jump into Q&A um, right now. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> I'm also losing my voice. So I appreciate you <laughs> getting through it. Um, I really loved what you said about social media as the cocktail party, you know, and you're you're trying to recruit your dinner guests. Um, so <laughs> thanks for the way you frame things. That really works for me. And I'm sure others on. We have some great questions coming through. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug away at them. Um, so one from Jenna on tips on how to use um hashtag to generate followers. And do you use a scheduler for social media posts? And if so, which one do you use? That's a great question, Jenna. So hashtags used to be a lot more valuable um, and useful when Instagram was not searchable. So if you, um, you know, everything in your, your, your comment, like if that was a blog post between SEO and your search function on your website, you could search and find that post. Instagram did not used to be searchable. Recently, it changed so that everything you type in there is searchable, including the accessibility tags on your post. Um, it's a great idea to make sure for people who have visual um, impairments that the screen readers can read what uh, your post is. And those tags are very searchable. So it's not only a nice thing to do, it also helps your posts get more reach. Um, so when hashtags Hashtags used to be the only searchable thing. You can still search by hashtag, but I don't believe that that's how people are finding you anymore. What I believe hashtags are, are valuable for is um, a series or helping people find things in your account. So we host uh, weekend retreats. We built an outdoor camp with an outdoor kitchen and wall tents, and we call it Camp Five Marys. Anytime I post something up at camp with this beautiful outdoor kitchen, I hashtag it camp five Marys. And then when people say, I didn't know you had this, I want to learn more about it. I say, yeah, just go to the, my hashtag camp five Marys. And there's the whole album of all of those tags. Um, so hashtags are a lot more useful for organizing these days than they are for growth. And then scheduling. I recommend not scheduling content. I think you lose your authenticity when you're using a scheduler. If you have a big launch or something that um, you feel is really valuable, you can schedule it. But really to, to be in the habit of sharing in real time or at least the same day, that is so much more authentic and your followers will connect with that. Scheduled posts always feel kind of feel just like that scheduled. Um, there are times of day that are better to post. If you look at your algorithm, you can kind of see, but there's really no like, oh gosh, this posted terrible because I posted it at this time. Different things work at different times. If I'm trying to sell um, a dinner box, so I'm like, okay, we're doing this family dinner box. I won't, you know, I, I'm doing a sales post. Don't, I don't want to post that at seven in the morning when people are like, oh, I just ate breakfast. So I'm not thinking about dinner right now. I think of the time zones of the US and I think, okay, between two and five, three and six, people are thinking about, oh gosh, what am I going to cook for dinner? Oh, Mary's got a dinner box. Boom, I'm going to take that. So I'm, I'm thoughtful about when I post things um, and if it doesn't work in your day or you live in a place that doesn't have great service, take video clips all day. It used to be 15 second videos for Instagram stories. Um, now it's 60 seconds. Uh, and Instagram stories is really, you're not going to grow in Instagram stories, but that's where you connect with people. And that's where you can say, hey, here's a link to swipe up and buy. Um, so you, you do your posts to kind of curate your feed and get people excited about what you're doing, but your Instagram stories is where you're connecting with people and where they're converting to customers. So take little video snippets all day long. And then at the end of the day, sit down, put your feet up and post those stories. People aren't looking at it like, wait, she's posting breakfast right now. And it's seven o'clock. They probably didn't look at their Instagram all day and they're watching it at eight o'clock right after you posted it and think, oh, that's what happened for her this morning. Um, so, and you can use that time or temperature. If you go to the um, little stickers, it will auto date um, timestamp, whatever time you took that video. So if you're doing a day in the life, take those snippets all day, post them at the end of the day. Um, but I don't suggest using schedulers. Um, you want me to read the next one, Elizabeth, or you want to read them? Oh yeah, sure. You can, you can jump right in, but yeah, we got lots of other questions coming through both the Q and A box and the chat. Okay, good. I've got the Q&A box, so I'll read through those if you want to take the chat ones. That sounds awesome. Um, Carrie said, what's the best frequency for po posting to Insta? There's no rhyme or reason, but the more you share, the more people will engage with you. I try to do um, one Instagram post probably five days a week, um, and I try to do stories every day. Now, there is a little trick to this. If your story views are getting lower, Taking a break for 24 hours from posting on stories um, and then coming back with you in your face and like 
hey, I'm here. This is what I have to share. Doing one of the engagement stickers, like a question box or a slider bar or a poll, that can really boost your Instagram story views. Um, but other than that, just try to post um, on a consistent, but it doesn't have to be like, okay, it has to be like this every week. The more you share, the more return you get on what you're sharing. Just make sure it's interesting. You don't want to have stories all day long that aren't interesting and always use captions. How many times do you watch stories with no sound? You're lying in bed next to your spouse and you're like, I, I don't want him to hear what I'm watching. Um, you're in a public place. You don't want your kids over your shoulder. All, mo most people watch stories. I think it's like high percentage, 70 or 80% without sound. So either type out what you're saying, a little synopsis or use the caption feature. Um, and you can edit those captions. If they spell something wrong, just click it and you can edit it um, to make sure that people can read what you're saying and not, if you just have a bunch of stories and you're talking with no captions, people are going to swipe on by and that's not great for the algorithm. Okay, Suzanne says, what percentage of your day or week do you devote to taking care of your socials? Does this vary seasonally? I would say um, probably two hours a day. I mean, it's my main job. It's where I see so much return on what I'm sharing, um, responding to direct messages, responding to comments. I'm not great at responding to comments because I feel like if I respond to a few, I need to respond to all of them. But I read and respond to almost all of my DMs, at least double tap liking them. Um, I have some efficiency tips and tricks um, that I share in some of my workshops for auto responders, how um, if you have an iPhone, you can go in your keyboard or Instagram has a feature for this too. If people share my meat, I can type three letters and it says, oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for ordering and being a customer. Things that would take you a long time to type out, I can just hit a reply really quick and send a thoughtful response to that person. Um, does it vary seasonally? You know, sometimes in summer, there's more beautiful things to share. But like I said, people want to see the struggle. People want to see the hard days too. So um, I try to share pretty much all year long. Um, and do you mind if we, or sorry, can we take one yeah. from the chat just to make yeah, sure? For sure? Yeah. So there's um, another folk, another person asking out advice on how to use social media differently based on your sales outlet. So if, if people are only selling at farmers markets or CSA um, versus a farm stand, um, do you have recommendations for that? Yeah. So if you're only selling regionally and you really want to, to reach the people that are in your area, um, location tags work really well for that. Like when you're at your farmer's market, always use that location tag to tag where you are. Use multiple ones. There's a park nearby. There's a restaurant nearby. People do tend to look at that and say, you know, oh, we're here, we're traveling, we're here this weekend, or we just moved here, what's there to do nearby? And they click on that and they see all your photos like, oh, wow, there's this farm that that's right near here that sells at this market or sells here. Um, the location tags can be really great for that. Facebook is really good for that, um, reaching people geographically. Um, I talked a lot about email marketing, but text marketing is also a very valuable tool. And with text marketing, you can target people by zip code, by county, by state. Um, that is a great platform if you're doing deliveries or sales. Um, good old fashioned postcard mailings. You can hire a company to say, hit this zip code and using what we call social proof saying, Hey, I'm already delivering to three people in your neighborhood who love what we're, uh, we love our CSA, love our selling. You should be getting it too. Here's our info. Um, hitting people, you know, in a targeted area like that works really well too. And social media still works, you know? you don't have to worry like, gosh, I'm reaching people, but only 10% of them live near me. They're going to tell somebody like, oh, I, I just, you live there. You have to meet this person. Um, it's not really a, you're not wasting your time by sharing in the general population either. We have a lot of overseas people who, you know, then I came out with a cookbook and they're all buying my cookbook on Amazon. So, um, you know, at some point, especially as you grow, the more people you can reach the better, no matter where they live. Awesome. And then one last question from the chat. We can jump back to the Q&A box. Um, are you the only person posting? Or are you sharing any of these posting responsibilities? I'm the only person sharing. I think it's really important for people to feel that authenticity that it's me. Um, we have sub accounts. I have an M5 recipes account. We do a little, um, an online virtual program for kids called M5 Ranch School. I have uh, a girl on my team who helps post for Ranch School. And sometimes for M5 entrepreneurs, we post um, different people, some of our members accounts and try to highlight them to get them some more visibility. So I do have sharing on that, but on my five Mary's farms account, no one's ever logged into it. Um, it's only me. And I do think it's, it's worth your time to um, devote to that. 
Awesome. Thank you. And we can jump back to Q&A box. Looks like Charity has her question up there. Yeah. Charity has a great question. I attract more farmers and ranchers, which is great for networking, but not so much for buying a product that's been challenging to navigate. Any tips on attracting the right audience? So I think that's just really through the content that you're sharing. And I do think that can be really hard because um, a lot of times people, especially in agriculture, want to, you know, advocate is a big term now. That is attracting probably people that are like-minded like you, or, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, farmers and ranchers, we got to stick together. We work so hard, you know, legislature's hard for us. That's really alienating your ideal client. I really try to, and not saying you're doing this charity, but I really try to um, stay away from any soapboxing, you know, saying are, you have to be eating this product because it's higher in omega-3s or it's this or it's that, or grass-fed is the only way to go. Um, all of a sudden people feel guilt and confusion and they don't necessarily want to buy your product and you might be alienating other people who are in your industry. So really focusing on this is the product we're selling. These are the features of these products. This is why it's awesome. You know, for us, it's like we do an extended finish on barley. We um, our USDA harvest at our own USDA butcher facility. We're dry aging. Why is five Mary's meat great? Not it's different. It's better. It's just great. And here's the reasons it's great. And here's the reasons you want to buy it. Um, you know, solving the problem for people. Can't think of what to do for dinner tonight. I've got a solution for you. Um, that really sells and will attract those customers who are more interested in um, buying your product. It's fine to attract farmers and ranchers, but uh, the content that you share should really be focused on attracting your ideal customer and they will come. You know, if you're sharing reels about, um, you know, raising black Angus, who, who are my black Angus raisers out there? Here's all the reasons that, you know, this is hard this season. That's not your ideal customer. If you're sharing, here's how to cook a great steak, doing a reel about, you know, sear it, reverse sear. Here's the what, here's what you want to look for. Teaching people who are your customers, they will come. You just have to adjust your content towards that. Um, Keith said, have you come across any new social media platforms to check out? You know, there's, there's, um, seasons to all of them, right? I don't know. I'm old enough to remember MySpace, but MySpace came and went, um, Facebook has stuck through it that kind of Facebook took a dip and now it's sort of coming back. Instagram, I feel like just is very saturated right now, but it's still the best tool and they're creating more and more tools for us to share as small businesses, for us to create content and for us to reach our customers. I haven't found anything that works as well, um, but then there's a whole another world of YouTube can be a fantastic platform. Pinterest is a great platform for if you're selling flowers, meat, CSA, produce, anything like that. People are going to Pinterest to look for those recipes and you can direct them right to your website. Um, podcasts are fantastic. In my course, um, we talk about a lot of these platforms and how to utilize them, but I always caution, like you can't do all of them and do them well. Like I don't really worry about Twitter. Um, I'm not doing TikToks. A lot of people are growing really fast on TikTok, but you have to think, is that your ideal follower or your ideal customer? I think you're going to find the most customers at that cocktail party on Instagram and then take them other places, but there are a ton of other platforms um, that can work as well. Um, Colleen said, uh, how much time a day do you send, spend posting? Also, how did you get emails sent to you through Insta and Facebook? Um, posting, it just depends. I'll post a lot of stories during the day and then probably do one, one post. Um, in the beginning, I think it took me a lot longer to compose a really well-written, um, caption and now I'm probably quicker at it. So, uh, it's just probably different for everybody. And then how do you get emails through Instagram and Facebook is a great question. You want to use that link button. So um, I actually have a free little mini course on, on setting up your email marketing um, that we just launched last week and people have been loving it. So we'll get you guys the link to that. But Flowdesk is what I would uh, recommend for email marketing by far. It's the easiest. It's the least expensive as you grow. It charges you a flat rate instead of keep charging you as you grow. Um, and it makes the most beautiful emails for everyone's inbox. A lot of the other platforms, you really have to like know coding to make them beautiful. Flowdesk is fantastic. Um, I have a link in my course for 50% off your whole first year. So don't join until you have that link to save $200. Um, but you can create in there what's called an opt-in. So that's a link that goes to a page that says, hey, um, do you want my you know free recipe? 
book or download, or just you want to join our email newsletter. And that puts them into your email marketing, um, which you really want to make sure you use. You don't want to send mass emails through Gmail or through your server. You want to use an email marketing platform. Um, and then what also is a tip I recommend for people starting out the question box. It's a lot for people to click out. You know, if you're like, click this link to join our email list, they got to click out of Instagram, put the email in and then go back to Instagram. People will do it, but they're much more likely to just drop it in a question box. So I'll say, Hey, if you want the latest update, or you want to know when our next sheet pelt release, here's a question box. And they type their email. You have to manually go and read all those and retype them and then upload them into your email marketing platform, but it's usually worth it. You'll get a lot more emails that way um, with that little trick than having people click out. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, and yeah, if we could just have another minute for one more question, which I sure. think is a good one. Um, so social media sounds like a full-time job. Do you still work for with animals coming from Yolanda? <laughs> yes, I sure do. My husband and I are out there on the feed track. We're banding our our lambs we're collecting chicken eggs we're i'm on the ranch um with my husband most of the day we also have a usda butcher shop we have our own usda on ranch harvest we have a restaurant in town five mary's burger house um we have a lot going on we ship from a farm store and we have a retail store so i'm all over the place all day um but that's the fun part i get to share all of that you know if i were just stuck inside posting things um i would have no content to share so I make sure that I'm out on the ranch um, with my husband, with my kids, with my staff at our shops all day long, creating that content. And then I either post it on the go in between um, or post it at the end of the day. Awesome. So inspiring. Uh, thank you, Mary, for, for sharing all this um, with us and our attendees. Um, it sounds like we'll have some resources from you to mail out to email out to folks who registered for today. Yep. I'll get you a list of those for sure. Awesome. And thanks for bearing with me in my trailer Zoom call today. We're at a rodeo in Utah with my daughters about to start tonight. So it was, um, and thanks Elizabeth for being flexible with me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's all part of the farm life and family That's life right. for sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if you're seeing the chat, but people are just really thanking you a lot. Um, just saying how awesome the content was. Um, so yes, yeah, so we can't thank you again. Um, or can't, yeah, just thank you so much for being here um, to share this material with us. And we're, we'll have this recording posted on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and we'll be emailing all the registered attendees, those resources that you'll be sharing. So thank you again, Mary. Appreciate thank it. You. Sounds great. Thank Thanks you. for being here today, you guys. Thanks for all the notes. I see it on chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah.